Hello everyone, in today's lab I'm going to show you all how to create a very basic model. Um, it's going to be a bookcase, so very square, sort of primitive object. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to utilize a couple different techniques. We're going to cover um, the basics of what uh, is called box modeling. Um, it basically utilizes the extrude tool quite a bit. Um, we're also going to cover the attribute editor and how to subdivide geometry utilizing the attribute editor. Um, and then I'm also gonna cover my user interface real quick as well. And um, I guess let's just get to it. So uh, the first thing I want to cover before I cover any of the modeling is just how do I have my setup? Um, so right here under uh, my workspace in the top right corner, right up here, um, you'll notice it says general. Yours should be the same. Again, I'm using um, Maya 2025. And if it doesn't look like this, um, you can always click on it and go to reset current workspace. And it should come up something similar to this. Uh, if you don't have the outliner up here, don't worry about it. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that in a second. Um, but this is the basics of how I like everything set. And you'll notice up here, um, this is my channel box editor. This is my attribute editor and this is my modeling toolkit. Um, now, if you don't see these up here, you can click and toggle them on. If they pop as a, up as a window, you can actually click and drag and they'll dock right over here at the end of your screen. Um, and two things I like to have. So the first one right here, this is your channel box uh, or and or layer editor, um, it's both. Then you have this little hammer tool which is your tool settings. And I like to have this open. Um, so this is what your tool settings will look like. And I like to actually click and drag that and drop it right here. Um, so that's all I did there. And you can actually kind of, if you needed extra space, you can open it up. It's just a quick way to access it if you need to. Um, the next one is going to be your attribute editor. Again, you can toggle it on, toggle it off. Um, but here's your attribute. And the reason you don't see anything in here is because you have to select an object in the scene to view and edit its attributes. Um, and then you have the modeling toolkit right here on the last one. It's that block with the, or like Rubik's cube with a little hammer next to it. Um, and you can have that one open too. This one here, the little person that toggle the character controls, we're gonna stay away from that for a little bit. Um, and, uh, this is how I have my user interface sort of generally set up. Um, the other thing I like to have, and this won't be as important early on, but later on through the semester, it will be. Um, if you go to your windows and you go to your outliner, so windows tab right up here, go to outliner. And this is going to show you, and I like to dock it right, right over here. Um, I actually like to have the outliner and then the tool settings. I don't know, it's just a habit. Um, but the outliner will show you everything that's in your scene. So um, any objects you create, right now it's just the four cameras, your perspective, your top camera, your front camera, and your side camera. I know you can't see it in here, and if you didn't watch any of the intro videos, um, I'm gonna cover it really, really quick. I know a lot of you like to skip straight to the labs. Um, and then these are your default lighting settings. So just leave everything that's default here alone. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you really quickly is if you tap spacebar, it's gonna open up typically as long as you have it set to the default, um, it will open up four windows, which all of you probably are on. If not, you can always just click on this button right here. This will open up all four of your uh, windows. Um, this is your perspective. So if you click on this, this will take you straight to your perspective. This one will take you to the uh, four windows. Um, this one is a front view and your perspective. Uh, last one is going to be tool settings, front view and perspective. So um, what happened to my outliner? I guess I took it out when I, there it is. Um, so this is basically how I like to work when I'm modeling. Um, and just so you're aware down here, this is your timeline. We're not going to get into this until a little bit later in the semester. Um, but 
let's go ahead and get started on modeling. So I'm going to start by creating a uh, cube. And before I even jump into that, make sure you're on your modeling tab here because all of these will change. Um, but we're going to stick with modeling since we're modeling. And then the next thing I want you to do is go to, you'll have, see all these little additional tabs here. Um, we're going to go straight to poly modeling because we're going to be modeling something, right? Um, the shape we're going to do is this one right here, polygon cube, create a polygonal cube on the grid. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that cube. And you'll notice now we have some settings over here on our channel uh, box slash layer editor. This is actually your layers down here. So this is the channel box up here, but it shows you displays both. Um, and you'll notice you'll have your translate XYZ, rotate XYZ and scale XYZ um, attributes, I guess you call it right here. Now, and then visibility on or off. So you can actually set things to be on or off. And um, I think you could type it, but it's really just zero or one, you know, it utilizes that binary kind of code. If it's on, it's one, if it's off, it's zero. Um, and anyway, so we have a cube, right? And on this cube, in order to make it, uh, start to look like a, um, bookcase, there's a few things we need to do to it first. It's not going to just happen on its own. Um, so uh, the other thing I'd like to cover is the move, which is W, E for rotate, and R for scale. Now, if you notice in the bottom left part of the screen, um, you can see everything I type just in case you're watching the video and you missed a keyboard shortcut I was using, you can always rewind and actually see which buttons I'm pressing. Um, and you'll notice right here on the sidebar here where you have your couple little arrows selection tools as well as your move, rotate, and scale, W, E, and R. These are going to be um, some of the most useful tools that you have. Um, another thing real quick is if you hold Alt and hold left click and you rotate around your model. So that's how you'll do that. Middle mouse but uh, alt and middle mouse button click is going to give you pan and right click with alt is going to let you zoom in and out just so you know. So you have the the most common buttons you'll be using for throughout the entire semester is going to be W, E and R for move, rotate, scale, move, rotate, scale and then alt to rotate, middle mouse button to um, pan, and right click to zoom in and out. Um, another really quick thing I'm gonna cover, and it might be too soon, but it might not be. Um, if you have one of your tools open, and this has happened to some students before, it's even happened to myself, that's how I learned about it. Um, I'm playing around on the keyboard, I don't know what happens. And for some reason, I make my tools really, really small for some reason. But if you use plus and minus, um, it actually expands them and, and makes them larger and smaller. So it's really, really useful to know. Um, but you have to have that tool selected. Um, same thing here. Um, anyway, I'll make it that big. I think that's a pretty good size. Yep. All right. Anyway, now I have my cube. I covered the move, rotate, and scale, uh, the viewports, and a, a quick thing, if you tap spacebar, oh, that was my, I'm gonna go back to the, my uh, four viewpoint here. So typically, it's always gonna default back to whatever uh, panel layout you had previously, but for the most part, we're always gonna be working in the um, four viewports. Um, if you tap spacebar on any one of these windows, it's going to basically pop that one open for you, right? So um, you'll see me do that throughout the semester as well. All right, so back to the modeling. Um, we've got our cube, right? Again, if you didn't catch it the first time, poly modeling and click on the cube. And now we've got our move rotate scale, but we're not going to move it anywhere. I like it dead center in the middle. Um, 
I don't need to rotate it, it's a square, and I am going to utilize my uh, tapping R on the keyboard, my scale tool, and you'll see I have it automatically selects over here. So the first thing I want to do, let's make it scale five. And you'll see as I move these here, let's make this one 10. Oh, that was an accident. Make that one 10. And then we'll make it a little bit thicker. And let's go two. Two will work. So I've got five, 10, and two on my scales. Um, and you can always eyeball these things and whatnot, but just so we're all on the same exact page, just because it's so new uh, to most of you or all of you. Um, scale X, Y, Z, I have as five, 10, and two, all right? Um, one of the things I like to do, and this will probably be the first time we're utilizing the move tool, is I like to press W, and then I like to just bring it just above the grid, which will probably be five, because it's basically 10 units in length. The point at which we're dragging it from is five, and this is um, exactly center to the object. And I'll know there's five on top and five on the bottom, basically, in terms of space or, or measurement. So if I bring it to five, it's gonna be exactly on that grid line um, at zero, so the bottom of it anyway. So that's a cool little thing to keep in mind as well. Um, but just for visual reference, just to keep it a little grounded for everyone, um, we've got this cube that we now turned into a rectangle and we just played around in the channel box editor. Um, whenever you create an object also, it's gonna give it a default name. In this case, under the channel box editor, it says P cube one. Um, they call this, I believe, camel case. So it's gonna be a lowercase p for um, poly or pol polygonal or polygon um, and then cube. So poly cube one. Um, if I were to create another one, just for instance, you'll see it down here, it'll call it p cube two. And if you notice in my outliner over here, now I've got two objects, right? I've got my p cube one and my p cube two. I'm gonna delete my p cube two just by pressing the delete button um, so I don't get confused or accidentally selected or anything like that. But now I've got my um, p cube one and I'm actually gonna quickly rename it by clicking on the name, just one click and call it book underscore case mesh, book case mesh. Um, we'll get more into naming conventions later um, a mesh is a term commonly used in 3D modeling. It's um, the the mesh of the um, model, but we'll, we'll ignore that for now, or we can just call it, let's just go book underscore case. There we go. So now I've got my bookcase. All right. Um, now, with that being said, on the bookcase, I am going to go ahead and cover the attribute editor. This is the easiest way to quickly um, change the geometry and subdivisions of a model, or at least a, a, a primitive model, because we haven't done anything except scale it and move it. Um, and I'm gonna get a little bit more into detail in a second. Um, but opening up your attribute editor, you'll see the name, bookcase, bookcase shape. But under this P, or polycube one tab, um, I am going to be able to change right over here, the subdivisions in width, the subdivisions in height, and the subdivisions in depth. Now, I don't know how many exactly I'm gonna need, but let's go with, Eight looks good to me on my subdivisions width and you'll notice it creates one two three four five six seven lines but holding right click is how I do this holding right click and going hovering over face but it gives us one 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different subdivisions. So that's why it has eight. It creates seven lines, but now we have seven sub or eight subdivisions, excuse me. All right. So I held right click and went back to object mode and then left clicked to select my object. Now in subdivisions height, I'm going to adjust this. Maybe I'll make it eight, 10, 12, 14. Let's go with 16. That looks pretty, pretty close. Um, so eight and 16 is what I went with. Now, in terms of depth, I don't really need anything here. Um, so I'm just going to leave that one at one. So here is my polygon, right? My, my, my cube that I've now manipulated into a rectangle with multiple different subdivisions across the board. And what I would like to do now is show you a quick um, way to do a little box modeling. So we are going to highlight some faces and start to create the shelves themselves. So if you hold right click and you go to face, click one, hold shift, and I'm just holding shift and we'll go to there. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And if you're struggling with clicking on it, you can always rotate. Holding Alt and left click will rotate. I don't know how many shelves, I didn't really plan this all out before I started to do the subdivisions, but I figured this looks like a pretty good start. Um, and now I'm gonna show you, I'm just quickly clicking now I'm going to show you a quicker way to do this. If I click on one and I'm holding shift and I double click the last one, it'll select that entire row. If I click this one, double click there, click this one, double click there, click this one, double click there. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five different shelves for my bookshelf. So once I have all these selected, right, there's so many different ways to access the extrude tool. It's not even funny. I can think of like five, maybe different ways to access the same exact tool. Um, to make things easy, I guess I'll cover the tab up here under the poly modeling tab first. And in this poly modeling tab, it is going to be this one right here, extrude. So this little poly plane with a um, rectangle being pulled out of it is extrude extent and it, the description of it extend new vertices edges faces from existing spots on a mesh there's that word again mesh um, so you can click on this and you'll notice you get some different um, options here I'm gonna ignore this for now um, but if I click on here I can just simply click and drag. Now I'm going to undo that real quick. So now I've created my shelves just so you all see. Okay. I'm going to undo that real quick. And now I'm going to show you another way. So if I tap W on my keyboard and I hold shift and I hover over my move tool, you'll see it says extrude directly underneath it. Uh, hope it's not too small for you to read, but it does, I promise you. Um, it says extrude underneath it. And if I hold this, now it extrudes that one time. Now, I'm gonna cover this also right now. Um, the most common issue I see in any student's models, and I've been doing this, I don't know, 10 years, give or take, teaching it anyway. Um, holding shift and dragging might be the easiest way to make sure that you don't create a million of them because I want to show you something really quickly. If I, for example, click the extrude tool and now I click it again. 
you can't see it, but now you've created multiple different edges, faces, and everything. And it can really mess with your geometry later on in the semester when we start to create our own midterm and our final and just your objects in general. So what I'll do is um, let's undo that. Oh, hold on. One, two. I wanted to show this to you. Um, I want to show you really quickly and highlight those faces again. If I click here, I can still drag it, but there's still extra faces in here. And I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to tap three on my keyboard to show you. You'll see all of these additional faces in this loop here are from pressing that extrude button. Now, the most common thing that I see is that students click that button too many times and they'll end up with a lot of these not realizing it. So try to keep that in the back of your mind throughout the semester because it can really make things a lot more difficult for you. Um, so try to, oh, that was a perfect example. Control Y, yep. You'll see this is what happens when you extrude. So if I click it again, of course it's not gonna show it. Yep, it did, it's just very, very small. And that's what happens. And when I press one, you can't see any of those, but if I tap three, this puts it into what they call smooth mode. It's like a preview of subdivisions. Um, it really can mess uh, things up. So anyway, let's undo all of that. And go back into one mode and extrude one more time and bring this back. Now, if you bring it back too far, it's going to go straight through the mesh. So try to avoid that. Just bring it just inside. Um, some of you might run into trying to grab it from this spot and you run into all types of weird things. All I'm doing is I'm grabbing it straight from this. Let me extrude again because I undo, uh, did the undo button too many times. Um, straight back. If you do it this way, it's going to go straight up. If you do it this way, it's going to go straight left or right. If you grab it from the center, it's going to go in all crazy directions. Um, and that could be like anywhere. You'll see from this angle, it didn't look like it too much, but from here it does. So um, anyway, once you get to here, just going to bring it just in a little bit. I now have my bookcase. And this is all I'm looking for as a submission. Just take a screenshot of your model here. Um, I'd like you to also have your attribute editor pulled up just so I can see that you added the attributes in um, after. Oh, and one last thing I would like to show you. Once you extrude or customize a model in any way um, in terms of changing naming conventions and things. So each one of these faces actually has a face. Let's just pretend this is like P face one and P face two and P face three. Once you extrude from here, it renames everything. And what happens is now when I go to my subdivisions here, it's going to do all types of crazy things. So you can really only utilize that in the beginning when you haven't made any changes to the model. Um, in terms of adding extra faces through extruding, um, even changing vertice points. or So if I hold right click and I go to vertex and I start moving these things, this will even kind of mess it up a lot. So um, the best time to utilize that attribute editor, which is great. Uh, it's a qu the quickest and easiest and most um, evenly dispersed uh, way to uh, subdivide geometry extremely quickly. Um, however, it does come with a catch. You have to do it before you do anything. So um, when planning a model, it makes it the most sense to kind of have an idea 
of the amount of faces, edges, and things like that that you would like to add to it. Um, other than that, this is all I'm looking for for the submission. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I've covered all the points that um, you may sort of have had questions about. Um, and I'm sure I've already answered uh, a number of questions that you would have had in the future, especially regarding that extrude button. So please make sure that extrude button, um, you might be best holding the shift key when trying to extrude, um, but you'll all find your other methods that are comfortable with you. Um, the other place you can find the extrude button while I'm talking about it is under your modeling toolkit. You have it right here under extrude. So this might be a really quick, easy way. These are a lot of very basic and um, tools that we actually use this semester. So I have nothing, you know, against you keeping this open. This is a great way, uh, quick kind of, kind of like this tool settings. Um, you can change the actual tool settings of whatever tool you're using, whether it's move, rotate, scale, extrude, soft select, etc. I'm not going to get into too many of them because I don't want to confuse you. Um, but we're going to be utilizing, um, we'll be using the combine button this semester. Um, smooth, maybe. Um, we'll get into that. Pro well, I'll, yeah, I can show you smooth. Yeah, I, I'll show you smooth. Um, Boolean we cover, uh, separate we'll cover, extrude, bevel, add divisions. This is probably bridge. These are all basic tools that we'll, we'll definitely be covering. Um, so if you want to keep that modeling toolkit open, um, you know, feel free. I'm a little bit more on the old school end, so I kind of go the old fashioned way where all the old, this didn't exist when I first started using Maya. The modeling toolkit didn't exist so you had to go through all these little ways to find out where your tools were if they weren't actually in the the tab that you were looking for um so i might be doing things a little bit old-fashioned i guess now at this point um but for the submission just take a screenshot have your attribute editor open to the poly cube um, so i can see your subdivisions and subdivision height width and depth um, not too worried about the channel box because I'd rather see the geometry than the actual positioning. I'd like to see what, what you changed on the model. Um, and one last thing you'll notice is that you now have an additional tab up here that calls called poly extrude face. So you can actually make changes as you go on. Your model actually holds a lot of that um, information and Another thing, and it's nothing to worry about right now, but once we get into more complex scenes like your midterm, um, clearing out the history of your objects can be very beneficial because it can slow down sort of the, the system because it's just got so much information, especially when you have like five or 10 models in a scene. Um, you know, let's just pretend I had a, a dining table, a chair, or four chairs for that matter a fireplace, the ceiling, any additional lights all modeled in this scene. Um, it could really bog down when you keep all this information in here because um, it, it just takes a lot of memory. Um, so it's going to hold on to that memory. Anyway, we don't have to worry about it anytime soon, um, but it is just to touch base on. Other than that, screenshot your, uh, your model and your, I'll go to your outliner your model and your, um, with your attribute editor open so I can see the, uh, under the poly cube, subdivisions width and height. Um, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I answered future questions, current questions. If you do have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. More than happy to assist you. Um, and I'll answer and respond as quickly as I possibly can. Um, Canvas is the quickest and easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, the Canvas inbox, just shoot me a message through there and I will respond as quickly as possible. Um, it is the fastest way to get a hold of me um, for a quick response. So, other than that, um, I look forward to any additional questions you have. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this little modeling project here that we did, this little lab. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.